Color profiles define the colors we capture with our cameras and see on our displays. They control what colors are used to help provide consistency between devices. Color is a pretty complex subject when it comes to photography, videography, and filmmaking. Your eyes can see far more colors than your camera can capture, or your monitor, or even a piece of printed paper can actually display. This means we need some way to define the subset of colors that cameras can capture or that monitors can display. We also need a way to keep colors consistent between the two. A certain shade of red that your camera captures should look the same shade of red on your monitor. This is where color spaces and color profiles come in. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about color profiles and color spaces and how to use them to improve your photography, video production, and your filmmaking. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work, and to help grow your business through something known as earned media exposure, which is basically through free advertising. If you like what you see, Smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome all your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. To begin, let me explain how we represent digital colors. While there are essentially infinite possible colors, cameras and monitors can't distinguish between them all. Instead, they use the RGB color model. They can represent any color just by combining different values of red, green, and blue, and hence the name RGB. In this image you're seeing, you can see how purple, turquoise, a light red, and yellow are created by combining different amounts of red, green, and blue. Outside of niche professional uses, most RGB colors are given in an 8 bit per channel format. This means that there are 256 possible values from 0 to 255 for each of the red, green, and blue channels, providing a total of 16,777,216 possible colors. That number is derived by multiplying 256 for red times 256 for blue times 256 for green. Multiply those three together and they add up to the 16.7 million plus number I just mentioned. RGB isn't the only color space, but it's the one used for digital applications. If you have a high-end printer or work with designers, you might occasionally run into the CMYK color model or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. That color space works essentially the same as RGB, but it combines four colors instead of three. And you probably have seen this when you're changing the toner cartridges in your printer. Since I've already used the term, let me explain what color space is. A color space is a specific organization of colors in combination with color profiling that I'll get into in more detail shortly. Supported by various physical devices, it supports reproducible representations of color. A color space is a useful conceptual tool for understanding the color capabilities of a particular device or digital file. While trying to reproduce color on another device, color spaces can show whether you will be able to retain shadow and highlight detail, color saturation, and by how much either will be compromised. It's similar to how an artist might mix their paint colors on a palette in order to visualize the range of colors or shades they have to paint from. A color space is effectively just a digital palette, except these colors are much more precisely organized and quantified. However, unlike an artist's palette, color spaces often remain unseen and serve only as backdrops for behind-the-scenes calculations. Even so, learning to visualize them can help you identify the most suitable color space for a given task. How then do you visualize a color space? 
A color space relates numbers to actual colors and is a three-dimensional object which contains all realizable color combinations. Similar to how one would organize a paint palette, each direction in a color space often represents some aspect of color, such as lightness, saturation, or hue, depending upon the type of space you're talking about. These two images show the outer surface of a sample color space from two different viewing angles, the front and the back. This surface represents the most extreme colors which are reproducible within this particular color space known as the color gamut. Everything inside the color space is therefore a more subtle combination of the colors shown on the surface. This diagram is intended to help you qualitatively understand and visualize a color space. However, it would not be very useful for real-world color management. This is because a color space almost always needs to be compared to another color space. So then, how do you compare color spaces? In order to visualize more than one color space at a time, color spaces are often represented using two-dimensional slices from their full three-dimensional shapes. These are more useful for everyday purposes because they allow you to quickly see the entire boundary of a given cross-section. Unless specified otherwise, two-dimensional diagrams usually show the cross-section containing all colors which are at 50% luminance. What can you infer from a 2D color space comparison? Both the black and white outlines in this image show the colors which are reproducible by two different color spaces as a subset of the reference color space, which is the space shown. The colors shown in the reference color space are only for qualitative visualization, as these depend on how your display device renders color. In addition, the reference space almost always contains more colors than can be shown on any display. So in sum, the two smaller figures represent two different color spaces from two different devices, and the full large color space is the reference space. In a perfect world, the two devices would be able to show all the available colors seen in the reference space, but that's not going to happen on any device. In this example, the wide gamut RGB color space can display more colors than the sRGB color space. For this particular diagram, we see that the wide gamut RGB color space contains more extreme reds, purples, and greens, whereas the sRGB color space contains slightly more blues. Keep in mind that this analysis only applies for colors at 50% luminance, which is what occupies the midtones of an image histogram. If we were interested in the color gamut for the shadows or highlights, for example, we could instead look at a 2D cross-section of the color space at roughly 25% or 75% luminance respectively. Knowing this, let me explain what color profiles are. In color management, a color profile, or an ICC profile as it's known, is a set of data that characterizes a color input or output device or a color space according to standards promulgated by the International Color Consortium, or ICC, which is where the letters come from. Profiles describe the color attributes of a particular device or viewing requirement by defining a mapping between the device source or target color space and a profile connection space, which is also known as PCS. This is quite technical, but in layman's terms, a color profile is a standardized way of displaying a particular color. Since not all devices or mediums can display all colors, as I mentioned earlier, and different devices display the same colors differently, we need a way to describe specific colors that is a standardized format. That's what a color profile is. That standard way of producing a color. Ideally, using it will allow you to color match across different displays or different footage captured with different cameras and so forth. With the RGB color model I mentioned earlier, we can display or capture a little over 16.7 million colors. But the question is, which 16.7 million colors to use? This is where a color profile comes in. 
Monitors are still a long way off from displaying the full visual spectrum, although modern cameras are a lot closer to being able to capture it. This means some trade-offs have to be made with these 16.7 million colors that we represent. Different color profiles make different trade-off decisions in the colors they include. So what are the different color profiles available? Here's some of the common ones you'll likely encounter in your photo, video, and filmmaking work. I mentioned RGB already, but there's also sRGB and people tend to think of them as being interchangeable even though they're technically slightly different. sRGB is the color profile used by 99% of the images or footage you encounter. Most monitors are designed to display a significant portion of that profile, but it's also the standard profile used on the web. In other words, unless you're getting into specialized uses, sRGB is likely the only color profile you're going to run into. There's also the DCI-P3 color profile. The DCI-P3 color profile has been used for decades by the film industry and is starting to crop up in consumer products as well. DCI-P3 has a wider color gamut, which means it can display a wider variety of shades of color than sRGB. The iPhone 7 and above all have a screen that can support the DCI-P3 color gamut. It's also the profile used by a lot of HDR 4K TVs. Another is the Adobe RGB color profile. The Adobe RGB color profile is designed to display a wider range of the visual spectrum than sRGB. It's mainly used by professional photographers and videographers. While most high-end cameras can capture Adobe RGB, only very expensive monitors can display a large portion of it. There's also what's known as the ProPhoto RGB color profile. ProPhoto RGB is another wide gamut color profile. It contains even more colors than Adobe RGB. Again though, ProPhoto RGB is limited to professional and scientific uses for the time being. It's actually so large that you need to use 16 bits per channel or 65,536 different values per channel for it to work properly. There are other color profiles out there, but realistically, if you're in a position to encounter them, you probably already know what you're doing and don't need this rather basic explainer video. Color profiles are one of those things that work in the background and that most people don't even really have to think about. Still, they are worth knowing about, especially if you're interested in photography, videography, or filmmaking. If you want to know more about a related topic, be sure to check out the companion video I did on color management. I'll link to that video in the description below so you can watch it after watching this video and you can learn even more. If this is making sense to you, put I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, what color profiles have you encountered in your work? Leave a comment below and let us know. I'm sure there's plenty more I didn't include in this video, so comment on one and help your fellow photographers, videographers, and filmmakers out. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,600 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR mirrorless or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. 
I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done other videos on filmmaking and video production, and I'll link to those in the description below. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you, on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own talent, skills, and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in myself. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that. You'll find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.